Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's roundtable, we only have uh, a few of us today. Uh, Eric, the technician Peterson, is on spring break with the family. Uh, Scott Bossman is doing Bossman-like things. But we've got Bearland Aaron. Bearland Aaron, how are you? Hey, everybody. I'm doing well. We've got the most feared woman in the country. The terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Great, great. Glad to have you on the call and breathe in the mailing. Breathe out the marketing. The Zen master, Mike Zeno. What's up, Mike? Hey, how's it going? Good to see you. Same here. And of course, I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? I'm happy, doing well. Happy to be on the call again. Happy to have you back. I'm glad to be back. Um, Seattle was, I don't know. It was a nice, big city. Uh, cold, and rainy, cloudy. It's a good place to go if you're terminally depressed. It's like just phenomenal for that. And the, but the food is really good. Um, and last but not least, you know him, you love him. The brain, the professor, your land geek Sherpa for flight school, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great, but uh, I want to continue with something you just said. You said that the food was good, right? Honestly, like, I think a lot of people when they go on vacation, and I was talking to the kids about this, they want to go to, they want to get some culture, right? Or maybe they want to do something relaxing. The Podolsky family, we do one thing. We eat. Yeah. So, Tate, when we were recording, <laughs> like, no, 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 hold on. Hear me out. Oh, hear me out. When we were recording our roundtable last week without you, Tate told us that you were at his favorite restaurant, the Cheesecake Factory. No, I didn't say it that way. The Cheesecake Factory. How was it, Mark? Mark? How was the Cheesecake Factory? All right. You know what? I'm not, it, it's, so, it's so wrong to even discuss on so many different levels. <laughs> I'm not even going to like engage, but I will answer Baron Line Aaron's very fair question. How was the coffee? My wife loves Starbucks. Loves Starbucks. In fact, if I had simply bought a share of Starbucks every time we bought a cup of coffee, be all over. Anyways, that being said, we went to the roastery, the reserve roastery. There's only one in Seattle, one in New York, three times. Like you can't get the regular sugary drinks there. It's like real coffee connoisseur stuff. And even the kids were like, this is really cool. So it was, it, that, that part was great. Did we go to the hipster Seattle coffee shops? You know, no. Did I try to stretch my ears out with those, Little things, no. Did I try to grow a hipster beard? No. I just avoided all of that. But it, 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 really was, it really was fun. But how was the Cheesecake Factory? You know what? You're, you're, you, you just got to <laughs> let that thing go. First of all, you know it's all about Panera Bread, okay? Is it? Is it? And we did not go to Panera Bread. That being said, before we left, my son got sick and he kept asking, for Panera bread, chicken noodle soup. And every time we went, I told him the story about you. Yeah. 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 Every time he's like, dad, I know the story. I'm like, it's just going to get better in time. Yeah. It's just gonna, you know, well, I can't wait to, I can't wait to ask your family how the cheesecake factory was since you won't discuss it. It's okay. We can move on. with All the right, Let's discuss our round table topic, which is hiring virtual assistants. Now, we all know sort of the places we can go to hire virtual assistants. Now, my favorite place is obviously the Land Geek VAs. Um, they're great. There's another group out there, I think, that's gaining traction. They're based in the Philippines. Um, I think it's called landmasters.us. Is that right? Um, I've not heard anything good or bad about them, mm -hmm. but um, they're there. There's upwork.com. There's fiverr.com. There's a plethora of sites. Like, First of all, can we all just agree that if you're not using global talent, you're missing out, right? Because it's just 
the best time ever to be an entrepreneur and tap into global, this global talent that you can get at a fraction of the cost that you can in the U S um, you know, there's no, you don't have to worry about benefits and essentially it's just the best way to get things done. The question is hiring them. How do you stress test? How do you know if your VA is going to be an A player or a B player or, you know, somebody that you're going to have to fire in a week? So let's start with somebody who's, let's just, let, she should just brag. She's managed over 150 people, a massive team in the U.S., but now is like the, the VA master. Mimi Schmidt, what is your process of hiring a top-notch A player VA, what do you look for? How do you test them? How do you know before you're like, okay, I'm going to hire this person? I don't post ads out on Upwork or Fiverr. I will create the ad because I have to invite the folks to it eventually, right? But I'll go look for people that meet my criteria and then I'll create my ad. And the more specific you make the ad, the better qualified person you'll find. And then I'll invite five or 10 folks to the ad, right? And then I'll look through the folks that have, uh, have responded. Um, and I've, I've found the best way to really assess people is to actually see their work. And so I'll hire, like I have, I've recently hired maybe two months ago, two ad writers. And so it's interesting learning their strengths, right? And just, I like to have folks do things that they're good at. So by testing them, right, they both are morphing into different kinds of doing different things based on their skill set. Um, but sometimes I'll wing it. Sometimes I've winged it on Upwork and I've found great people that work for me for more than two years that I pay four or six dollars an hour, right, that I just continually give more responsibility and, and, um, and more money. I, I do think you've got to take the time to train people though too, right? And that iterative approach, give them something to do. I had an ad poster do my land moto deal of the week. She said she did it and never got the response, right? So this Thursday, we're going to have to iterate around and see what she's not doing right. But you got to give these folks, I'd say a month, six weeks, depends upon how fast you're giving them the work to uh, really teach them how to do it appropriately, right? With videos and documents to refer back to. And you have to be able to answer, give them the time to answer your questions. So um, I find that most of them, you know, they have the, the will to do it. They really want to try hard, the folks that you find on Fiverr and Upwork. Um, it's just sometimes the skill doesn't work. But that's, that's my two cents. All right. Wow. So just to be clear, you don't create a general ad, let's say for an ad writer. You go out and you are proactively searching for those people first then right. you're inviting them to your job is that right right i don't want to get flooded with 100 resumes to look through that's too much right, right i'm that's... gonna go find people that that i don't want people applying that don't have the background so i'll that's, make the job yeah. description i'll look and find the people and invite them to the job that's super efficient now let's say it's 10 people you invite will you give any type of test from there, or do you just hire them, see their work for a month or six weeks, and then decide? And then how many do you hire at once? Two for a job usually, and I will. I'll just hire them and start giving them the work, right? Also, you know, we usually have a, a, like a Skype call, an interview, and where I'll ask questions and things like that, but I'll usually just hire them and give them a shot, right? And, and time, time will tell. Do you waste time with references? Um, no, I don't. And it's to the point where I've got a pretty good bank of training materials now that I can give them access and tell them what I need them to go through. And then once a week, I just follow up with them and I give them a little bit more, a little bit more, and review last week's work to work out any kinks. Wow. That's really a, a detailed answer. Mike Zeno, are you doing anything differently than Mimi? There you go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I can hear you. No, that, that was a great, great answer, Mimi. Yeah, and I think it's it's difficult working with VAs, right, in the beginning because, um, you know, I found that uh, people's, you know, just because they have a great, um, you know, kind of biography about what they've done or references, it doesn't mean anything, right? It's really – and, you know, we can try to also um, basically over 
you know, when you're trying to train people, you can give them too much detail. I think what a good VA and how you season them is you let them think for themselves. You give them some parameters and you let them make the mistakes and then you point out the mistakes and then you, you want them to have the ability to really, uh, you know, think for themselves. You know, sometimes they'll ask questions. If it's an obvious question, maybe I won't write back right away. Maybe I'll wait to see if they can figure it out. I want someone who's got that ability to, to think, right. Um, and not just be literally, it's tough because sometimes, especially with the um, uh, language barrier, when you're working with someone in another country, they, what they, what you say literally is what they do sometimes, right? And that can be difficult. So you give them a sense of guidelines and you let them follow them and you check their work. I wouldn't, for instance, I was having scr someone scrub a list. I wouldn't have them scrub 200 names. I'd have them do like five or six, let me check their work, correct it, five or six, check my work, check their work. And then when I feel like they've got it, let them go. Otherwise, you know, that's a recipe for disaster. So you do have to slowly season them. You have to give them more and more responsibility as they're ready for it. And, uh, you know, compliment them. I don't think, let them know when they make a mistake, you know, because they're very apologetic, you know, a lot of people. And, and you let them know it's not their fault because ultimately it's our fault. We're the ones training them. So you own that um, and let them know, no, I'm sorry, I wasn't clear. This is what I, you know, so it's a really, it's a relationship building process. And it can be heartbreaking because you got to go through a few good ones to get that right one. It's, it's like, any other relationship. It takes time to develop. Yeah. So yeah, I, I love that. I'd, I'd like to know, do you do any kind of stress tests before you hire? Um, well, I, I, I always want, want to have them accomplish something, right? So the stress test, I guess, is if, if they can actually pull off the, you know, Hey, this is a sample of what I'm, lo I'm looking for you to do. Can you make this happen? And uh, you know, maybe not give them, um, really, really intricate details, give them kind of a base description of what I want done. And that allows you to see how well they think for themselves. So I guess that could be stressful if they're looking for um, exact, like minute details, that's, you know, they have to kind of interpret it. And, uh, you know, you see who you're dealing with, you know, again, but you own it. If there's mistakes, you let them. But yeah, I think that is stressful to somebody in a sense that they don't have every minute detail, you just have kind of a gross description of what you want done. And and see what they do with it and, and know that they're going to make mistakes, but be okay with it. It's just how they recover. We all make mistakes. It's how do they recover from them? How do they follow up from them? Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. The big Papa Tate Litchfield. What are you doing differently than Mimi and Mike? Um, I, you know, I pretty much do the same thing. I hire fast, but I fire fast as well. I mean, I will hire a lot of people very quickly and I'll let them know, Hey, I'm, basically going to compare and contrast your work against the four other individuals and the two that perform the best are the ones that I'll keep. So that's always been my approach. Um, I try to lay out, you know, fairly decent instructions for them. But uh, as Mike said, I want to have somebody who's a critical thinker who can solve problems uh, working for me because the idea behind a VA is to make my life better, right? Make my life easier, reduce some work for me. And if my VA needs to contact me two, three times a day to get help or clarification, and all they needed to do was, you know, dive a little bit deeper into the, you know, the instructions or figure out a new way to get around that link not working, you know, that's, that's not really the person I want to employ, unfortunately. So I'm a big believer in, you know, you hire the best performer out there. And uh, as Mike said, all the VAs that I've worked with have been fairly decent. Um, when I find somebody that I really like, uh, I'll give them more and more work based on their experience and the amount of trust that they've earned from me. And I've got VAs who we've been employing for years now, and they're fantastic. I mean, it has never been easier to outsource, honestly. When you write your ad, though, are you doing the Mimi approach or are you going to do more of a general approach? It depends on the position, right? If it's, a, if it's a really important position, maybe like an assistant or an intake manager or help on the sales side, I'm going to go out and find a few qualified people for it. If it's something that's not as important or not as finicky, like if I need somebody to help me with sending out offers or uh, basic due diligence, you know, anybody that has access to stable internet and that can, you know, watch a video can do that task for me. So, I mean, a lot of that stuff I don't go, I don't really need to post ads for because most of the time I can contact Danielle at the Land Geek VAs and tell her what I'm looking for. And she can either give me a name or a reference of somebody who's capable of that, 
or, you know, sure enough, they can do it for me immediately without any training. So I haven't had to train a lot of people in recent weeks or even, I don't know, a year or so because they already seem to know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, would you do a stress test before you hired? Well, yeah, I'm going to want to see what they're doing, what they're capable of, right? Especially if it's somebody new. Um, And like I said, I hire fast and I fire fast. So I'll extend the job opportunity to maybe a dozen people and whoever does the best work on that job or can provide the best details. Or even if somebody comes back to me and says, here's the best I could do. It might not be perfect, but I'm always interested in improving, you know, please help me improve. That's the kind of person I want to work for. And so, yeah, always stress tests. All right. Well, before we get to Scott Todd, I just want to remind everybody that today's podcast is sponsored by flight school. Learn more about flight school and flight school live. Just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call with the Zen master Mike Zeno or the Bossman, uh, the Nightcap Meister, Scott Bossman. And um, that would be, uh, that'd be great. So uh, if you don't know about flight school, it is the way to get going in this business. And your uh, flight school Sherpa is Scott Todd, whom has done over 800 deals. Uh, he will take you from newbie all the way to being Obi-Wan. Kenobi up that mountain. So just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Scott Todd, what do you do when you're hiring your VAs? First of all, I don't need the cheesecake factory uh, when I'm interviewing them. But but beyond that, I did that just for Mimi because you know Mimi's been enjoying this cheesecake factory thing. No, like here's the deal. Uh, first of all, I have kind of a, a the rule is, is that if they're going to talk on my behalf, meaning like intake manager or sales manager, salesperson, well, then I'm going to interview them. So what I'll do is I'll post a position and then I'll interview them. And for every position, I give them a test. And I, and I don't mean it to be like, um, like, okay, you know, you got to do this. You got to jump through these hoops before I'll hire you. I, I'm looking for certain qualities. So salesperson what's important to me is that they follow up so i want persistence so what i'll do is i might say like after the interview okay listen i'm gonna make a decision tomorrow i'll let you know and then i want to see are they going to follow up with me are they going to stalk me are they going to hound me uh and i'll delay think of like a customer i pretend like i'm a customer oh, i haven't decided yet maybe, maybe tomorrow not sure are they going to follow up with me the next day are they going to text me are they going to call me are they going to give up after two times Okay, so that's, that's important. Um, for people that are not, or for positions that are not customer facing, if you will, they're back, you know, they're, they're basically for my benefit. They're, they're saving me time. These positions I do not interview for. I don't, I don't interview them. I will look at their qualifications. I'll choose two or three that I think are good. I will hire them and then I give them an onboarding test. Like basically, they don't know it's a test, but what I tell them is, hey, listen, Here's your first assignment. Your first assignment is to go do this thing. And the thing about this little assignment is that it's one that I've already done. It's not something new. It's not a new list. It's not, it's like the, the due diligence one. It's the same due diligence one every single time. I know what the answers are. I know what I'm looking for. I know what I'm happy with. And I give them this thing that I've already done the due diligence on myself. And I see what they come back with. Did they find something new? Did they not not find something? And so it's a little test, but they don't know it's a test. They think it's their first assignment. So then they're going to go out and they're going to go do this thing. I'm going to see how long it takes them because I know what's acceptable and what's not. And then I make a decision. Do I give them more or do I cut them loose? Because there's no, it's not like you, you got to, I always joke, like you don't have to be the Donald Trump here when you're firing VAs and say, you're fired. You don't do that. What you do is you just say, hey, thanks a lot. Appreciate working, working with you. I'm going to go in a different direction. And then you part ways. That's what you do. So, you know, that's kind of like my, my strategy that's there. And, um, you know, I do, I will look for ways that I can give someone an initial assignment. But again, it's something that I've already done myself. And I know the answers, uh, what the answers are, what success looks like. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I have a buddy who's a dentist. And what he'll do for his stress test is he'll have his assistant that's being interviewed have to go out and make him a sandwich and he'll say this is the sandwich i want and he'll he'll purposely 
put on there a kind of cheese that the store doesn't have. And then he'll see how do they handle it, right? Will they just say, oh, they don't have that cheese? Will they go to a, a couple of other different stores? Like how will they improvise when they literally can't do it? And, um, and then based on that, he, you know, either hires them or doesn't. So um, I always thought that was, you know, if we could apply something like that to know, like, are they going to go above and beyond? Then um, we know we've got somebody that's going to think for themselves, right? It's like, oh, they don't have that, that type of cheese. I'll just make up a cheese because, you know, Tate's on the call. Like Jarlsberg, is that a cheese, Tate? I don't know. <laughs> you love cheese. Yeah, but I mean. What's, what's a kind of cheese? Like a Gouda or something. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It was something you can't get. Uh, yeah. Duffel Gouda. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So Duffel Gouda. So I don't know what the right answer is. What would, what would you do, Mark? I do well, you I, 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 would, I would say this is, you know, I asked the person at the counter, um, you know, first of all, I called through other stores. They don't have Duffel Gouda. So I asked the person who's a cheese kind of store at the counter, this is the most similar to Duffel Gouda. Truffle Gouda. And truffle truffle Gouda. Gouda do that. Whatever it is. Duffle. Duffle Gouda sounds interesting. That was grown in a bag. All right. So, Bearland Aaron, what is your big takeaway from everyone's answers about hiring a virtual assistant? Um, <clears throat> the stress test um, is a is something that's pretty important um, because you know whether you do it before or after you hire them you want to make sure that they're going to be up to task um, and that you're not going to be continually paying for somebody that's not doing the things that you need them to do um, I like the idea of uh, letting somebody go and seeing how they solve the problem you know um, not micromanaging their whole process because it may not be how they work best to return the same result that you want at, at the end anyway you know um, I know there's some tasks that I hire out that I've got a, a video recording of and I want it exactly like that because um, it may be something like pictures that need to fit a format for a web page or something like that so I can't I don't want them all kinds of different sizes and resolutions and stuff I want it a certain way so you know, that might be something that's pretty specific and I want them to watch a quick video and decide if they want to do it. And then if they do and they return with good results, we're good to go. Um, something that's maybe a more complex task. Um, you know, I, uh, I just recently did one and kind of a, a little bit uh, like Mimi, um, I requested people to interview for the job, although I did post it public too, just to see if there's anybody great out there that didn't necessarily fit the keywords or the, you know, of that job description. Um, but, you know, nonetheless, like everybody that is applying gets a, gets a job to do a stress test, you know, um, and that'll weed out, you know, people pretty quickly that either aren't up to the task or don't want to do it. And that's okay. You know, so, um, I really like all that. And then, uh, of course I like the fact that, um, you know, if you don't want to go through the trouble, you can always, uh, get with the land geek VAs and have them solve your problems for you too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I just thought of a great interview question and, um, especially if like, let's say it's going to be an ad writer, you're at the cheesecake factory what cheesecake would you order and why? So, Tate, how would you answer that question? Well, I don't need a cheesecake factory. It's too loud. And right there, you'd get hired. <laughs> right there. He says, okay, I'm the kind of person that doesn't eat cheesecake factory. Well, I, I just, love the cheesecake factory. Come it's on. too loud, Mike. It's too loud. We had this discussion last week, and I'm sure the audience doesn't want to go down this route again. But, but I do have a... I do have a, a saying when we're there. It's go, it goes like this, ironically enough, cheese only, because there's so many different kinds of cheesecakes, and you always are disappointed. It's the cheese only, the regular traditional cheesecake. So we say cheese only. That's what I'd say. Hired. You're hired. I like that answer. You know, it's funny because um, I do like the Cheesecake Factory. I'm just joking. Uh, just for their cheesecake. I, I find that the food, you know what it is? It's kind of like, it's just, um, above, it's just consistent above average food. It like huge portions is what I find. 
So we just go there for cheesecake. And, um, you know, my wife's more fruity and I'm more chocolatey. So it's a really great way to fight. It's, a, it's, like, it's like a marital conflict at Cheesecake Factory every time. She's like, like key lime, really. And then like I make a, like a dismissive comment about her taste buds. And then I'm like, oh, you know, let's go with like the Oreo cookie. And she's like, well, are you a child? Are you a child? And then we start fighting, like, don't call me a child kind of thing. And then, you know, it's just- and a Mark's list. walking home. And then I'm walking home. And then, you know, <laughs> eventually I'm eating key lime cheesecake. So, no, I joke. Honey, if you're listening to this, I'm just joking. I hope you know that. It's all for entertainment purposes. I love going to Cheesecake Factory with you because we each get our own individual cheesecakes. And that way, everyone's happy, um, except for, of course, the scale. All right. So, um, Scott Todd, you're like afraid to talk now. <laughs> uh, I'm just wondering, like, I I'm just trying to see how this all this played out, the Cheesecake Factory in Seattle. I I'm just... I'm just it's like 90% of it is your fault. So it's your job to tie us no, back. No, you're in. the one you're the one that said it last week, Tate. We can rewind. I said he's eating at one of my favorite cheese factories. Factory. Cheese Teachers. Factory. I mean, Teachers, what other man. cheese factory would there be except for the Cheesecake Factory? Ah, oh, Scott, that's it. We're doing Flight School Live in Seattle, and I'm going to make Scott fly all the way across the country so we can go there. Best mac and cheese in the country. Teachers. Although I don't know, we gotta we gotta give apologies to Wisconsin. You know they probably have the best. It's a dairy yeah. state. Scott's not here know. to defend it. Yep. Yeah, it's got to be up there, Tate. Yeah. No. <sighs> the thing is, I don't even know what this cheesecake factory joke is all about. I wasn't even here. It really wasn't a great joke, uh, but <laughs> you know. Just because you're such a foodie, the fact that you'd be in Seattle eating Cheesecake Factory when you could eat it so many other amazing restaurants. I mean, nothing against Cheesecake Factory as long as you could go before. You know, sometimes, so, um, sometimes when you're with the kids, you got to go a place that has a thousand menu items so that everyone can find something they like. True. No, that is, that is true. You know, what's funny is uh, one of my favorite scenes that I show the kids a scene is from The Office where Michael is in New York. And he's telling the camera, I'm going to go get myself a New York slice. And you see him walking to Sabaro's. I love that scene. Kind of reminds me of that. So I thought this was a great roundtable discussion. And hopefully the listeners are going to completely ignore the whole Cheesecake Factory uh, digression and really focus on the meat of this, which is, you know, some of the best ways to hire and stress test a virtual assistant and, and where to go. So we are now at that point in the podcast where we're going to pick on Mimi and ask her for the tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? Well, I'm just going to stay on point. HireMyMom.com. All of my U.S.-based VAs are stay-at-home moms. My intake manager and both my ad copywriters. So um, they're a great re resource. And I know a lot of folks that have had really good luck with them lately. I love I've had really good success. MyMom.com. You, you have two, Tate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can find some really, Hi, yeah, high, high quality individuals with, uh, you know, great educations, great backgrounds, great experience levels. And they're just looking to supplement some income. Um, and do it kind of as a side hustle. It's a really good platform. And for like ad copywriters, people who have English as a first language are, are a good choice, I believe, because with Craigslist, you want your uniqueness rating to stay strong and first language English speakers can come up with five ways to say adventurous, right? The, the, their command of the vocabulary is much stronger. So. Right. Cake of cheese. Something like that. <laughs> Mimi's like, that That just wasn't yeah, even funny. dessert. Yeah. Right? They can right. come up All with right. lots of different ways to say things. There it is. Hiremymom.com. All right. Fantastic. 
Well, I thought this was a, a really fun uh, round table. And hopefully everyone knows that we're just having a good time and will support us. And please do that. Please subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit. Uh, Tate, are we good? Yep, we're good. Barely and Aaron, are we good? Yeah, we're great. Zen Master? Perfect. I loved it. Perfect. Um, Mimi? Yeah. Can, can I ask a housekeeping question? Are we doing uh, the anniversary uh, nightcap this week? Mike? <laughs> yes, we are, but this will be recorded next week, so you've already have seen it successfully played out. <laughs> I, won't, I won't let the oh, Godfather right. down again. All right, no worries. Well, I want to, I want to watch. I want to be there. Oh, I felt so bad that night. Now I get, oh, anyway, it, it went I, great. It happened last week. It went great. I showed up for the accountability thing module. I thought that was awesome. No, I know. Thank you. I'm saying that because this is going to play next week. So we already did the nightcap reunion, and it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, great, great. Uh, Scott Todd, are we good? We are very good, Mark. Thanks. All right. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll see everyone next week. All right. I, th I think we might have gone too far with the cheesecake thing. Uh, not a, in fact, I've got a question. Yeah. Would you rather spend a Saturday afternoon at Cheesecake Factory or Panera Bread? That's oh, the question that's, I submit. That's, I don't even have to think about that. That's easy. Cheesecake Factory. Panera. I'd go to Cheesecake, but I'd have it to go. There you go. No, okay. you, no, 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 no. you don't have a choice here, man. You either have to spend the afternoon at Panera Bread or the oh, afternoon. He took option C. Option you can't, C you can't, you can't <laughs> dictate. You're right. It's loud. It's crazy it's loud. It's super loud. And it's so open, right, that the volume just... It's just not, you know, it's not a pleasant dining experience. It's just too loud. Can't, 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 uh, can't you sit outside at the Cheesecake Factory? I guess not. Yeah. Yeah. No, you, they have outside seating. Okay. They, well, they, they, there yeah. you go, Tate. There you go. And I cheesecake. I got to find a way to bring a cool, a cool piece of uh, truffle gouda to boot camp. You got to try it. It's the best. You like I think you can learn a lot about a person by the type of cheesecake they eat. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. It's very intuitive. Or if they eat it at all. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, if, it, if they eat it all, what's that saying? <laughs> I don't have to ride the Peloton as frequently. <laughs> uh... <laughs> If they eat it all, what if they don't share? Does that mean that they're selfish? Are they like, no, I don't want to taste yours. I only want the one that I got. Yeah, we have one of those. Is that bad? It's possessive. No, um, it is what it is. Order, order what you want, right? Like order the one that you want. You shouldn't just reach across though without asking and take a dive in with your fork. That's not cool. That yeah, that's that yeah, is I mean, like a cheesecake. Isn't that like the, uh, if you wanted fries, you should have ordered some. Quit taking mine. Yeah, I, I think the question is: Do you do you go with the whipped cream first, and then the cake, or do you like do you go with the crust first? Like I like I love the crust the most. Crust first, it's like the great yeah, always the crust first, right? So Oreo yeah, crust, graham cracker yeah. crust. Oh, well, Jesus, graham cracker. Oreo crust. I like a little of each. Oreo. A little of the whipped cream, a little of the cheesecake, a little of Yeah. Good stuff. They should really make the crust wrap around the whole thing. I, you know, Scott. I think Thursday night we're gonna we'll do Cheesecake Factory for boot camp. That sounds like um, that sounds <laughs> well, like a must. Yeah, okay, I have a couple opinions on that. Number one, that will probably make Tate very happy. Number two, uh, <laughs> number two, 
Uh, it sounds like if if you do that in in Scottsdale, it sounds like you're taking a uh, a layup for the restaurant choice, because that would be your hometown that you are supposed to like deliver the uh, the goods. And so if you do the cheesecake factory, it's like it's like opting out. It's like you know yeah, that is to deliver. That's that's a that's a good. That's a good. That, see, that's that's kind of the throwdown right there, right? Like, uh, you know, those are fighting words. Yeah, I mean, I mean are you going to set gonna eat a cheesecake? We're going to do dessert at cheesecake. Mark, oh. are you going to set the standard for 2019 at the Cheesecake Factory? Is that what you're trying to do here? No, no. Okay, no. I mean, my, Mike, Mike delivered, Mike delivered in San Antonio, and that's not even his home turf. But uh, oh, he that was so cool. cool. I love how uh, Tate and Scott just reunited there against Mark. That was really good. <laughs> yeah, that was, you know, did, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's it. Next yeah. time we go to San Antonio, we got to get that private room that you had to like oh, knock yeah. on the door yeah. of Mike. Oh, yeah. I got to love that video. A little speakeasy. Yeah. Way cool. Hidden, hidden. Yeah. That hotel was awesome. That was a great hotel. I think, I think the Scottsdale Hotel is going to be phenomenal. You could what's cool is you could see the homeless people outside, uh like <laughs> peeing in the street. That was great, right? In San Antonio? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Camelback Resort there is in Scottsdale is pretty sweet. We're not going there. I know. I'm telling you, it's gonna be tough to be. The oh, new one. Oh, I know. You're saying it's good. Uh, then that's it. that's awesome to hear. I I think it's gonna be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it myself. It's my three-year anniversary. Uh, what what anniversary? This month, th this April in Scottsdale, will be my three-year anniversary. Wow! I know. We'll, def we'll definitely have to celebrate that, for sure. Um, you know, maybe truffle gouda. That's right. With like three candles. <laughs> I don't know. All right. I know Zeno's got a pretentious hard stop, so. Uh, thanks everybody and thanks, Mark. Uh, appreciate all of you. See everyone next week. All right.